In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix the 500 internal server error error message, and we're getting started right now. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If it's your first time here, hit subscribe, then hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. Now let's hop over in the screen capture and learn how to fix this error message. I'll see you there. The 500 internal server error can be caused by a number of things. It's a non-specific error, meaning it doesn't tell you exactly what the problem is. All it says is there's a problem with the server. It's not necessarily a problem with WordPress, although it could be something with your WordPress files, or it could be something with the server files, and we have to troubleshoot a bunch of different things to see what the actual cause is. I generated this 500 error on purpose by messing around with my HT access file. So that's one of the ways we fix it. We're gonna look at that one last because we're gonna do this like an actual troubleshooting process. We're gonna go through the steps and then find the correct one at the end, usually Murphy's Law. So the first thing we're gonna do in this troubleshooting sequence is check our plugins. We can't log into our site because we have a server error. So to check our plugins, we have to log into our site files using FTP or through cPanel. I'm gonna go through cPanel here. I'm gonna click on File Manager to open the file manager. Go to public underscore ph or HTML and under WP content, we have our plugins folder. If we rename this folder to something like old, that will deactivate all of our plugins. And then if we come out here and refresh this page and that fixes the error, we know it was a plugin that did it. And then we can go into the WordPress backend. Actually, you know, first we come back in here and rename this back to normal. And then we can go into the WordPress backend and activate each plugin individually, refresh the page, and then see if that fixes the error. Then we know which plugin it was. They would either delete that plugin, find an equivalent one, or live without it, or contact the developer, or take any number of steps. But either way, don't activate the plugin that causes the problem. If it's not your plugins, next step is increasing the memory limit on your site. To do that, we head into, back into our cPanel, go into wp-admin, and check for a file called php.ini. Scroll down to the P's. We do not have that file here. So I'm gonna click on plus file and I'm gonna call it php.ini. Click on create file and I'm gonna find that file I just created, which is right here. And then click on code editor and I'm gonna type in memory equals 128 MB. And then click on save. So now we have this updated. We head back to our site, refresh this page. If the error is gone, we know it was a memory problem on the server. If this memory fix didn't work, there's a couple other ways to do it. I've linked to a tutorial down below so you can try those out. But if it didn't work, or if it did work, sorry, you have to contact your host to try to figure out what's causing the memory drain because it's not good to be using that much memory on your server if you don't know why it's being used. If you know you have processes that run all the time and you need them, then it's okay to use the memory. But if you don't know why the memory is being used, contact your server or your host support. They can check the logs on the server to try to figure out what's causing the drain on memory so you can fix that problem. And if increasing the memory limit did not clear up the 500 error, the next step is to copy in a new wp-admin folder and wp-includes folder to your site files. And what I mean by that is we head back into the cPanel and we go level up to our root. I missed it. So we're in a root here. These two folders, we can try replacing those if our fixes so far did not work. Now the first thing I recommend you do if you're gonna try this is make a copy of these. Actually, no, compress these. So I'm gonna just right click on it, click on compress, choose zip, call it wp-admin-backup.zip and compress those files. Do the same thing for the WP includes. Just in case something goes wrong, we're gonna have a backup that we can revert back to. So now we have our two backup files here. So you can just go ahead, delete these. Just for fun, I'm gonna show you our site now. Nothing really changed because we still have that server error. So the server error is occurring before those folders are even loaded. So in this case, it's not those folders but I'm still gonna show you how to get the, the new versions of those folders. So we go over to wordpress.org, click on the blue download WordPress button, download it. Here it is. 
I'm going to decompress this by just double clicking on it. We've got our folders in here, WP admin and WP includes right there. I'm going to highlight both of them and I'm going to compress those two. Compression is complete. Mine's just called archive by default. The name doesn't really matter in this case because we're not saving it for anything. We're going to upload it right away. So I'm going to head back into my C panel, click on the upload button. I'm going to drag and drop this archive.zip and upload that guy and then close this, refresh, click on the reload button. Now we have our archive folder here. I'm going to click on that, click on extract. Now it's all extracted. Mac adds this funny little folder which we can just delete that if you have a Mac. Windows does not do that. But now we have a new WP admin and a new WP includes folder. And that's what it means to install or to upload a fresh copy of those. Now if something goes wrong in this process, remember you always have the backups. These two right here that we created earlier. So you can always revert back to those by just deleting those, uncompressing these two, and it should be back to normal. Backing up is key. Whenever you're messing around, back stuff up. I'm gonna delete the original archive because we don't need that anymore. Now we head back to our site, refresh this page, and hopefully that fixes it, but it doesn't. So it's still something else that's the problem. Another thing it could be is a corrupted HT access file. So if we head back to our server here, we have our HT access right here. I'm gonna edit this or look at it. And you don't wanna just delete it because there might actually be valuable stuff in here that you want. So when it's corrupted, you can usually, or not usually, but sometimes you can see the good code and the bad code. For example, for this tutorial, I added this gibberish down at the bottom. But all of this stuff up here, I still want to keep that because that's important stuff. So if you can see a definite difference between the good code and the bad code, just copy the good code out. Highlight it like I've done here without the bad code. And then right click, copy. And we can close this and we can delete this file. So we're clicking on delete. And then we're going to see if that is causing the problem. We're gonna leave it with no HT access file for now. Come out here, refresh this page, and now our site is back. So it was the HT access file that was causing the problems. We just deleted it, but WordPress needs an HT access file for permalinks. So what we're gonna do is head back into our dashboard. Instead of just creating an HT access file in the cPanel, we're gonna create one inside here. So we're in the dashboard, go to settings, Go to permalinks and then scroll to the bottom. Don't change anything, just click on save. Now if we go back to our cPanel and reload, we see we have an HT access file, which WordPress just placed there and it has information about permalinks, which is right here. And now we have that good HT access code still in our clipboard, maybe if you do. You just right click there, click on paste, and this part here is the WordPress code. So I'm just gonna delete that so we don't have double. And the rest is that good code that we had. Sometimes you can't identify the good code, so don't worry too much about this step. Click on save changes, go back to our site, and hopefully it's still there and not broken. And there it is, there it loads again. So that's four different ways that you can possibly fix a 500 error. If you've tried all of those, none of them worked. Leave a comment down below and we'll see if we can figure out what your problem is. So those are the various ways you can fix the 500 internal server error message. Hopefully one of them works for you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below the video. And if you haven't done so yet, hit subscribe, then hit the bell notification icon so you're notified when I publish more tutorials for you. And next up is clicking one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side so you can learn even more about WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.